Good morning, everyone. You know, um, pastor asked me to preach. I always love to preach and I always love to share the word. Hey, hey Abraham, good to see you, man. He's in my group. Um, I always love to preach and love to teach, but I was, I was heartbroken, quite honestly. I was heartbroken because if you were here last Sunday, you'd know why I was heartbroken. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? What I, know, what I, know what I'm talking about. Pastor Paul delivered the word. So as we stretch our hands towards him earlier for his healing, let's do this real quick. Stretch your hands towards Pastor Paul. He has no idea what I'm about to say now. So he's nervous right now. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. Guys, get the chicken grease. Get, get the lard. Get the, get the anointing oil. Um, whatever, what else we got? Just bring your lotion. No, I'm just joking. I just, I just want you to declare this with me. We're declaring this to Pastor Paul. And over, Pastor Paul, just stand up and receive that just for a moment because this is going to be amazing. This is probably one of the greatest anointings we're going to release on him right now. You ready, ready? You guys ready? Come on, declare this. Pastor Paul, you're not off the hook. You better preach it again next week. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. He received it. He, he stood and received it. So God, we're in agreement. We're in agreement that he's not off the hook, and he received it. Amen. 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 We set him up. We set him up, and he took the bait. I saw him. He's like, ooh, this is going to be good. No. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me. <laughs> Which one? What's that? Oh, I'm holding the bottom thing of the mic. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you, Brian. No, this is good. I, this is good. I can work it. I can work it. Brian's going to so get me after the service, but it's okay. I love Brian. You know, God is good. We say all the time, come on, God is good. I wanted you to do one better. When I say God is good, I want you to say he's good to me. God is good. God is good. God is good. And I am thankful that we get to be part of the expressed goodness of God. Isn't that amazing? Just look at the person around you. Just look around you for a moment. Those faces are so beautiful. Just look around. Just, that's a face you're going to get to see in eternity. I mean, I, I smiled. <laughs> Nish, look at Jose with that mask on. You'll get to see that every day in eternity. Every day. <laughs> God is good, guys. This morning, as Pastor shared with us that we're talking about life groups and how we're getting ready to launch into this new semester and this new term of life groups, and I really believe that God has something and God is developing something in the life groups that is going to just be impactive and explosive as we progress through the year. We've learned some things from COVID, and COVID has taught us that we were better together. A amen? Does anybody realize that we are better together? Today I'm going to teach you and I'm going to talk to you about connecting and belonging. Just that simple. It's about connecting and belonging. I want you to open your Bibles with me. Open your Bibles. We're going to go, first we're going to go to Ecclesiastes in the NIV, but you guys know I'm a King James kind of guy, so right after that I'm going to, I'm going to take you over to King James and we will read what King James has to say about what we're going to talk about today. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to verse 12. I want you to go there. And as you're going there, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask the Lord to really just speak to you specifically. Speak to you individually. But speak to us also collectively concerning the word he has for us. So, Father, even as we're going to Ecclesiastes 4 right now, God, I pray... For every person that's under, under the sound of my voice, for those that are watching at home right now, 
those that are watching from their couch. God, we thank you for them, God, because they are part of what you're doing right here in this, in this little town called Victorville. They are part of what you're doing in this explosive church called Life Church. And so, God, we praise you for those that are in the room and those that are in their personal rooms, God. God, that you would meet them, your presence would meet them right where they are, just like your presence is, is with us in this room, God. And God, that you would speak, God, you would speak so transparently to us, God. God, I pray that each and every one of us would come before you open, naked, nothing held, nothing held back, not holding anything back, God. But God, in complete transparency, God, that you can speak to us. You said in your word that your word is, is as a two-edged sword. It's sharp. It pierces. It cuts and it divides. And so, Father, I pray even right now that your word would divide. It would cut down to the deep places in our hearts. It would challenge us this morning. And it would call us into a greater intimacy with you. As you call us into greater intimacy with your people. And so we give you praise for this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, verse 12. I'm, I know me, me pacing back and forth right now is giving the camera guys work. I love you guys. Um, you guys are amazing. Let's praise the Lord for our, for our media team. They are doing an amazing job here. And so we bless God for you guys. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. I'm reading from the NIV. And it says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Verse 11. Also, if two lie down together, they, keep, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And here's, here's the kicker. I love this part. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. If anything you got out of that verse is this one thing, we're better together. Can anybody say that? We are? Good. Now, I want you to, for all my King, where's my King James people that love to read King James? My, who, who, King James now? I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgot where I was. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm going to read verse 24 and 25. Now, I'm going I'm to read verse 24 first, and then I'm going to back it up, and then we're going to, excuse me, I'm going to read 25 first, and then I'm going to back it up and read 24, because we, many of us know 25, but sometimes we forget 24. So I'm going to read 25 first, and then we'll back up and read 24. 25 says this. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. You guys, how many guys know that? If you heard, you heard your parents tell you that. You heard, you heard your Christian believing friends tell you that. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. How many guys heard that before? Raise your hand. Just wave at me online. Just wave at me. Yeah, I see you. Okay, good. Now let's back up to verse 24. And it says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love. The, the, the NIV says spur. Let me apply some pressure, just a little pain, just a little push. To provoke one another unto love and to good works. Now let's read verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Just, just, just lift your hands and close your eyes for a minute. I'm going to sing this song. Where's Valerie? Val, can you jump on the keys for me real quick? I don't know if you know this. This might predate you um, as, as we're getting ready to do this. This might predate some of you guys because um, you guys, you know, I've been in, around for a while. So just bear with me. I'm going to try to sing a little something for you. And then I'm going to take you right into what I have. Val, Val, you're gonna to have to catch me in the key of um, the key of Ian, uh, all of them. All yes, of them. yeah, 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 yeah. All of them. She knows. She already knows. <laughs> Let's to make it easy on me, guys, and for you watching at home. To make it easy on you, just close your ears. I mean, close your eyes <laughs> and lift your hands. <laughs> close your eyes and lift your hands. 
you are holy, holy, Lord, there is none like you, you are holy, holy, glory to you alone, you are holy, holy. part I found where I belong. I found where I Sing it again, but think about the words you just said. I found where I belong. Do it one more time. I found where I belong. I found where I belong. Oh, oh, good girl. That's what I'm talking about. She's going to be my next door neighbor when we get to heaven. Because I'm going to have her on her balcony in heaven playing the keys for me 24-7. That song, I learned that song shortly after I got saved. I think it came out in 1998. It was a few years right after I got saved. And after I gave my life to Christ... That quickly became one of my favorite songs. And I think today, it's still one of my favorite songs. And I couldn't figure out why that song was one of my favorite songs. Until one day I just began to just process the words of it. Because we're talking about small groups. This song directly reflects what we're going to talk about today. Because I knew that God is holy. I can worship him for that. I know that God is worthy. I know that he loves me. I know that he loves you. I know he's amazing. I know all these things. And even though you and I can know all these things, there can still be something missing. You are holy. You are holy. Lord, there is none like you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Your glory to you alone. But then I got to the last few words of the song. The last few words of the song says, 
and I've found where I belong. And then it hit me, Pastor Paul, why that was my favorite song. Because my entire life has been a place where everywhere I have gone, everywhere I have been, it's been something in me that tells me you don't belong here. I was never at home in the world, even though I was of the world and I was in the world. I was never at home in the world because it was not where I belonged. But the problem happened was when I got to church, I didn't feel at home there either. And part of the problem with us as believers sometimes is that God has saved us. You know he's holy. You know he's worthy. You know he's amazing. And yet you know something is missing in you. Could it be, could it be that you have not found where you belong? Could it be that, that you're, you're, you're going to church, but you still feel isolated, disconnected, and alone? And when the, the words of that song resonated in my spirit, I found where I belong All of a sudden, something in me said, Ian, you're home. You're you're at home, Ian. Turn to somebody around you, just to your left and to your right. We won't talk to each other today. It's okay. Talk to somebody. Tell them, you are at home. I was talking to somebody this week, and I was was sharing. The person recently just recommitted themselves to Christ. And in that conversation, I felt the strong push to tell them, You're at home. It's okay. You're safe now. You're in a safe place. You're in a good place. You're at home. And I shared that with them. And I could just feel how the presence of God, I'm on one side of the phone. The person's on the other side. And I can feel the presence of God settle something within that person that says, you're right where you need to be. But very possibly, some of us are going to church. And we have not had that sense of, I'm at home somebody say i need to be at home jesus didn't just call you to come to him jesus called you to connect you to his house jesus didn't just call you for an intimate isolated relationship with him he didn't call you to that he called you to a community a fellowship with him jesus calls you to his house Genesis chapter 28. You can write it down for those who are taking notes. Genesis chapter 28. Jacob is in the middle of the desert. He says no one is around him. And and Jacob declares this. This is none other than the house of God. The gate of heaven. Jesus picks it up in Matthew 21. Jesus says this. My house. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. In other words, God says I've got a house and that's where you belong. I've got a house and you belong in my house. I didn't just call you to me. I didn't call you to be alone. I called you to be connected. Somebody said get connected. Jesus has called us to get connected. So many believers are living, trying to live their personal relationship with Jesus, isolated. And the problem with living isolated is that it puts you in a place of inconsistency. You're living in limbo. What do I mean by that? The church is called the ecclesia, the called out ones. He calls us out of the world. But simultaneously, 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 as he calls you out of the world, he's calling you into community. He's, he doesn't just say, come out of the world. He's calling you out of the world into community. What happens is, oftentimes we come to Christ and we say, I have the personal relationship with Jesus. So we took the first part of the bargain. He's called us to him, but we left the second part and we didn't get into the community. The problem is, in between the calling out and the, and the calling into, there is limbo. And there's this place that so many believers are living in that you're living in limbo and it creates inconsistency in pursuing Jesus because Jesus didn't call you to nothing. He didn't call you to be alone. He didn't call you to be isolated. He called you to be connected. Somebody say, I got to get connected. Jesus called you to get connected. 
He called you to get connected. And I, I found, I've met so many people that they're in today and they're out tomorrow. Jesus said, this, Jesus gives a story in Mark, Mark the 4th, the 5th chapter about the seed and the sower. And he said, there's a person in there, that category, they receive the word with joy. But the problem is they don't have root. He says, and because they don't have root, they receive the word. But when problems, pain, and pressure, their roots disconnect because what? They were never really connected. And so we shift back and forth i'm in i'm out i keep pursuing jesus i'm back in the world because i've got to find somewhere where i belong i don't feel i'm not connected in the house of god so let me go back to where he pulled me from but i realize i don't belong there so i so i go try to go and it's, 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 uh. anybody know what i'm talking about the old folks used to say let the church Say, say, yeah, 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 yeah. Say amen. amen. Let the church, okay, let me stop playing with you guys. <laughs> Go back to Hebrews chapter 10. <sighs> Hebrews chapter 10. We still in the King James, guys. We still there? He Hebrews chapter 10. Because I'm really talking about connecting to a life group. Friends, listen, we have so many different flavors of life groups in this church. For you that are watching online, we have so many different flavors of life groups that you can get connected. And I'm going to show you the, the power of why it's so important for you to get connected in a moment. I'm going to show you the power in, in a moment as we read that. I, have, I, have, I do a Just for Men group. Um, got some guys in my group. Got some guys right here in Life Church. Got some guys in Texas on the East Coast. Got some guys that are international. They're not even here. They've never even been to the United States. And they plug in every week because they understand I've got to get. If there's one thing this pandemic should have taught you is that you and I are not our best when we've been disconnected. If there's one thing that the pandemic has taught our society and the world at large is that when we get disconnected, all the stuff that's been there rises to the surface. How, how many things did you guys see on the news that's been there, but because we were disconnected, just had to come to the surface? Because when you are not connected, the issues that you deal with, the circumstances that you deal with become larger than life because you are alone in it. You have to get connected. You have to get Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 24. Let us consider one another to, pro to provoke unto love and to good works. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. He says... Consider the person that's next to you. That person next to you is there to provoke you. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not even looking at my wife. She's looking at me like, yeah, I know you, bro you provoke me a whole lot. No. Nah. <laughs> I'm not going to look at her. I'm not going to look at her. She's like, yeah, he right. He right. I can attest. That's, that's scripture right. It's right. It's right. He be provoking me. See, so that person next to you. They're there to provoke you. But it says this, they're there to provoke you to good works. Sometimes we don't get connected to the house of God because sometimes we're afraid that they're going to provoke me. See, because the last time I got connected, they provoked me. They said this about me. They did this to me. They did that. They were provoking. Hey, God says, you know, no, no, no. Actually, I, I need you to go through that because they're there to provoke. The NIV says spur. You know, like on a cowboy, how he, how he, you a know, horse and, and he, he, he spurs the horse and, and the horse, ah! Because sometimes, sometimes we get stagnant with God. And God says, yeah, I need Sister Sour right there. I'm not going to point there. I'm just going to point. <laughs> I, need, I need Sister Sour to provoke you so that you can. You need some provoking. I could. <laughs> I 
I can see somebody driving home after church and looking at their wife. Don't, don't provoke me. <laughs> Mercy. They're, they're there to provoke you to good works. Good works. In other words, in other words, that person, the, the house of God, the people that God has put in the house to get you connected to, are there to make you better. You become better the moment you get connected. By the way, as I'm reading that scripture, notice it's talking to you individually, but it's talking to you about community. It's talking to you about community. Uh, baby, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't have called my wife at that point about after spurring. But baby girl, can you bring me that, that, that bucket right there that, under the seat? This is my good thing. Come on, guys. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> All right. It says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Now, if you look, if you, some translations may have it, some may not. But in the King James, right after that good works, normally we just read to the next part. But there's something there that most of us don't pay attention to. It's very small. It's minute. It's minuscule. If you don't, know, if you don't pay attention to read slow enough, you'll miss it. It's not actually a word. It's an expression. It's a colon. Go, look at it again. To provoke unto good works colon. You see that? Colon. That means that the statement is not finished. And what's about to come after that statement is the second half or qualifies what came before it. So he says, let me tell you that you are here to provoke each other to good works. Therefore, I can throw a therefore in there. Verse 25, do not forsake assembling. Why? Why should I not forsake assembling? Because that person next to you is there to provoke you to. That means if you forsake assembling, you're not being provoked to good works. You're being provoked, but not to good works. Because the world will provoke you, but it's not to good works. And God says, my house, get, if, when you, once you're connected to my house and connected, not just coming to church. Because the problem is we come to church, but we're still isolated. And God says, no, 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 no. I need you connected. Why? Because when you get connected, I can provoke you to good works. So, then he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Now, oftentimes we read that word, assembling of ourselves together, and our mind goes... Here, we need to gather together. That's, I'm, in, I'm in church. I'm assembled. But that's not what it says. Let me explain the difference between a gathering and an assembling. Can, can I show you the difference? Can I show you the difference? Let me kick this out of the way so I don't step on it again. I've got a box of puzzles. You guys see it online? You've got, got a box of puzzles. Now, watch this. Whoa. Hang on, I just got to get these together really quickly. Uh, 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 put you back up there. Put you where the others are. Good. Every piece is up here. One problem. We have a problem. I have no idea what this is. You see, the problem is they're all gathered. They're all in the same place. Inventory is accurate. But they're not assembled. So we come to church. And we're all here. 
except for Willie. <laughs> Willie don't want to stay in church. Come here, Willie. <laughs> He's in law sheet. <laughs> we're all assembled. Excuse me, we're all gathered. But the problem is, the problem is we're not assembled. The difference between gathering and assembling is gathering deals with inventory, but assembling deals with connecting that reveals purpose. Assembling deals with connecting that reveals purpose. The part of the problem is, let me get, can I get Susan? Susan, where's Jerry? Teresa, Mario, and Yurich, the, the, the one I just met this weekend. Where's Yurich? There you are. Come, 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 come quick. Come quick, guys. Come. Yeah. Come, come, guys. Come on up. Come on up. Um, Mario and, 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 and Jerry, can you guys grab that board for me? Just, just, just bring that board out just like it is. The, here's the problem. Here's the problem. When we gather... All I can see are a bunch of different pieces that make no sense. They're so different that it actually creates a problem instead of purpose. Because all we can see are our differences when we gather. But God says, no, 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 no. I don't want you to gather. I want you to assemble. Um, Susan, Susan, Susan. Susan, yes. it's obvious. Susan, yes. good. I just wanted to make, get one more yes out of her. Susan is obviously different from, from me. <laughs> just a little bit. She's not wearing her Judge Dredd coat today. She has white hair. Hey, hey! I said white, not gray. She has white hair. And I have a lot of potential hair. <laughs> I have a lot of it. Susan is obviously female and I'm obviously male. She's obviously not black. <laughs> what? You guys are shocked, aren't you? <laughs> and I definitely have black to share. <laughs> Susan, 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 where are you from? Philly. Philly, but what, what's your what's your your people? I'm a Paisan. I'm Italiana. She's a Italiano, hey, Italiano. What up in the hell, say Italiano? Let's see who's who. Come, this is Susan's husband, Jerry. <laughs> Woo! Isn't he handsome? Isn't he handsome? Yeah. Jerry, Jerry, where are you from? Guam. Jerry, Philly Italian. Island. Guam. He's a he's a he's an Islander, guys. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Love the island. Woo! <laughs> Who we have over here? Come, 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 come on up, come on up. Actually, you guys scoot that way a little bit. Scoot that way. Yes. Okay. Who do we have here? Who do we have here? This is Teresa, guys. <laughs> yeah. where, where are you from, Teresa? Sudan. She's from Sudan. Philly Italian. Guam. Sudan. L lovely husband. Come, 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 come. He's a macho man. <laughs> this is a macho guy. I love this guy. This is Mario. Mario, where are you from? Sudan. He's Sudan. They have something in common. They have something in common. Who do we have? I just met this gentleman this weekend. I already love him and I just met him. His name is Yuri. Yuri, I try to say with an accent so I can sound intelligent. Yuri, is, I'm close. Yeah, yeah. He's being kind. You, Yuri, where, where are you from? Ukraine. He's, oh, yeah. Did you guys, did you guys see my different puzzle pieces? Ukraine, Sudan, Sudan, Guam, and Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Philly Italian. Philly Italian. Now, where's, you guys have a puzzle in your hand there? Now, can you just you kind of just show them? If you, I don't know how if the camera can get on it. Each of them has a piece of puzzle, and that's you. 
They're different. They're gathered, but you can't tell what they're displaying because they're not what? They're not assembled. And the only way for them to get assembled is for them to get what? Let me tell you what happens sometimes. Let me tell you what happens sometimes. Sometimes my bulge is trying to fit into your, and we just tension, tension. God, I don't feel like I, I, I belong. God, I feel like I, don't, I go to church, but I don't feel like I belong because I'm looking at our differences. But he says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. And the moment we start assembling, all of a sudden, that which we could not see, that which has been hidden, starts being revealed. Wow. Starts being, re- but the problem is the, the picture isn't really clear yet. Why? Because there are pieces that are what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. How could that be? Because we're all gathered. We're all here. How come I can't see what they're trying to show me clearly? It's not, the problem is not that you show up. The problem is that you're not. Whew. So Teresa, 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 you, can you. Can you get where you fit in? Can you, can you go where you belong? Can you connect? Can you connect? She's con- she, she, oh my goodness. A part of the picture that we could not see just got. Who's, who's, Mario, Mario, where are you? Go, yeah, can you connect? Can you connect? Can you connect? Can you connect? Oh, oh my goodness, the picture is getting clearer because people are not just gathering, they're connecting. Oh my goodness, uh, Jerry, 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 quick, Jerry, Jerry, where do you belong? I gave him Hawaii, it's the closest thing I could find to Guam. <laughs> On the map. Je- whoa, 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 what's the picture? What's- Susan, 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 where do you belong? Susan, Susan, get connected. <laughs> But what's amazing is I just met Yuri. I've only met him two days now. But guess what? It doesn't matter how long I've met him. We can still connect. You, Yuri, can you can you plug in? Can you? That's life group. That's getting connected. Because it's not until you are intentional at at connecting to the assembly God placed you in, does the picture become clear? Oh, some of you are sitting on a part of the picture that we have yet to see. Part of, some of you are sitting on, on part of the picture that has not been revealed. But the moment you get connected, the moment you are intentional and say, I'm just not going to go to church, I'm going to get connected. Stay right here, guys. Luke chapter 6. Go to Luke chapter 6. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. You guys are watching online. This is important because even though you are not here, it does not mean that you cannot connect. You can connect. We have multiple life groups with multiple people all over the world that are connecting to little old Victorville because they recognize I am not good on my own. It's best for me to get connected. Isolation doesn't work for me. I've got to get connected. And some of us, all of 2020, we were, we were isolated. We struggle in depression. We struggle in this. We struggle in that. We struggle in that. And God, all God is saying is, I just need you to know where you belong. You've been, you've been out of place for so long, you don't even know where you belong. God says, you're, you're sitting in it right now. All you just have to do is connect. It's just that simple. All you have to do is simple. The, the bar is so low. You know, God didn't make it difficult for us. I mean, he sent Jesus and said, you know what? He'll die. All you have to do is accept. There's nothing for you to pay. I mean, I'm, I'm dropped the bar low for you to enter. 
He says, I'm going to bring you to my house. I'm going to give you good music. I'm going fe- to let you feed on the word. And it's all for free. Just, just show up. But he says, no, 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 no. I've got, even, I've got, some, I've got some more for you. You're, just, you're, just, you're only partway in the house. Come, let's step in a little further. Connect. The bar is so low. It's not even requiring you to commit. All it's requiring you to do is show up. Just connect. Sometimes I watch how we as believers do after church. We love each other. But we act like, like we got to get to Applebee's before they run out of apples or something, whatever. <laughs> or bees. We just, we just I just got to go. And it's okay. It's okay. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 and 38. We're talking about community. Connecting to community. Because I'm going to show you some of the tensions, but I'm going to show you what Jesus did with it. Luke chapter 6, verse 37, he says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Talking about community. Who is he talking about judging not? Uh, Okay. He says, Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Hmm. Who is he talking about? She says, forgive. You shall be forgiven. What was he talking about? What, what, what is he talking about? She says, she says when, you, when, you, when you go to connect, the first things that are very obvious is our differences. I'm a black guy from the Caribbean. Married to a beautiful guy, from, I mean girl. <laughs> Basketball, you want to come get the mic now? Married to a beautiful woman from, from, <laughs> he says, he won't judge me. He got that scripture. Married to a beautiful woman from Tennessee. It's Tennessee. She's the only Tennessee. <laughs> that met a guy from the Ukraine, very different from me. And he tells me, he says to me, hey, 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 you, when, you get to, when you see those people right there, when you see him, don't judge. But he didn't just tell that to me. He told that to him. He says, don't judge him. And he says, he says, you're going to meet a guy from, you're going to meet a guy from Sudan. He's an amazing cook. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He's an amazing cook. Don't judge him. And he says to this guy, don't judge him. He says, you're going to meet his wife. She's going to be amazing. She's going to have a heart for the Lord. She's going to have an ear for heaven. She has favor in heaven and with man. She's just an amazing woman, but she's from Sudan. She's nothing like you. Don't judge her. And she won't judge me. Don't condemn her. Then he says, you're going to meet this guy, Jerry. This guy, he's cool. He's always cool. Always cool. You know, y'all know Jerry. Y'all know Jerry cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody like, yeah. Jerry is one of the most tech savvy guys you'll probably ever meet in your life. I mean, he'll build your computer from the dirt of the earth. He's that good. He'll extract the metal ore and he'll just, Jerry is just that guy. <laughs> Am I embellishing it a little bit? <laughs> but he's amazing. Don't judge him, though, because he's not like you. He's different than you. Jerry, don't judge him because he's not like you. Then he says, you're going to meet his wife, Susan. Now, she's a little firecracker right there, I tell you. (laughs) Now, she might come with a little more thorns than all the other pieces on the the board, but but don't judge her now. Because she is an amazing person. She is an amazing woman. And she's great with finances. But they're so different from you. They're f- completely different from you. Look at this group of six people standing up here. Just different. Look like a salad bowl. we just from everywhere. And he says, huh? She, you're the cr- yeah, you're the crouton. <laughs> crouton. Jerry's cheese because he's more complicated. Take some more to make. <laughs> but then 
He says, forgive. Up until this point, he says, don't, don't. But then he says, do this one, forgive. Why would he say don't, don't do? Because sometimes they may forget the don'ts. And he says, how you gonna, how you gonna thrive in a community is when people forget the don'ts, you remember the do. He says, forgive. Because there are times when you're going to forget the don'ts. And they're going to have to remember the do. Forgive. But then he doesn't stop there. We, we go now to verse 38, which is one of our, our, our scriptures we love to quote when it comes to tithe and offering. But let me just suggest this goes way beyond tithe and offering. Luke 638 says, give... And it shall be given. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did we miss something? Yes. 37 ended with a colon also. So the, the conversation is not over yet. It's only halfway through. Verse 38 now says, because you don't judge, because you don't condemn, because you're forgiving, here's something else to do. Give. And it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall, shall who? Which men? Because sometimes we think it's going to be them out there. And so because we're not connected, we're actually disconnected from what God is trying to pour into you as a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The men he's referring to are the same men, he said, Judge not. Condemn not. That's, oh, that's Yuri. That's you. He says, when you get connected to community, God is able to express his love to you through the same people that he told you to judge not, to condemn not. Those very same people, he says, those people are the one that I want to lavish my love onto you with. And he says, not only, he says, because you gave to them, you gave him your love, you gave him your time, you gave him your attention, you stepped into the, into, into relationship, into friendship, you stepped into it, they then begin to give back to, what I'm finding out is we stay so disconnected for so long, we forget, we miss blessings and we're like, God, why haven't you blessed me? And God says, well, I'm trying, but you're not connected. I'm trying. Can I, can I use you and pa Pastor Paul and Charmaine? Can I use you guys? I did not know them prior to 2015. Yes. Prior to 2015, I did not know them. But from the moment that we connected, I cannot tell you how much, how much Pastor Paul and Pastor Charmaine has been a blessing to our lives in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Have they given into my bosom? They've given me their time. They've given me their attention. They've blessed me financially. They've blessed me above and beyond. They've blessed me with wisdom. They've blessed me with connections. They've blessed me with people I never knew. I never knew Nisha if I didn't connect to them. I would never know Jose if I didn't connect to them. I would never know any one of these people up here if I didn't connect to them. I wouldn't know Valerie. I wouldn't know you. I wouldn't have never seen you, never met you, never even known you guys online existed if I did not connect. God says, I've got good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men that you connect to give into your bosom. Thank you, guys. I'm going to leave you with this. This is my first close. I got two more after this, so just <laughs> play with me. You guys remember back in the 90s, there was a song. There was this old TV show called Cheers. You guys remember that show? Let me read to you the opening lyrics of the song. Making your way in the world today, take everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to go away? This person got problems, by the way. <laughs> all these nights when you've got no lights, they got money problems too. The check is in the mail. It sure got more bills than they got money. And your little angel hung the cat by his tail. Your children are crazy. 
and your third fiance didn't show. You got relational problems too. Then it goes to sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see. Our troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. I do have one problem with that song, though. One problem with it. The song closes out and opens to a bar. And the entire show is surrounded based on a bar. Could it be that some of you have ran to places to connect that you didn't belong? Some of us, we run to alcohol, drugs, binge watching Netflix. <sighs> All kinds of stuff we're running to, trying to connect when God is always saying, God is saying, why don't you come home? Why don't you come to my people? Why don't you come to my house? You have family. You're not alone in this. All you have, you belong somewhere. I want to challenge you really quick. Because I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, when God is speaking, there are moments when there's some things you have to go home to do. But there's moments when God is saying, you got to do it now. Because now faith is. This is the moment. This is your moment to step into what God is moving in. Because if you don't step in at the right moment, sometimes we procrastinate and we lose it. And the next year, we find ourselves back through the revolving doors of in and out inconsistency. I'm going to challenge you. In the chair in front of you, you there's, there's this little envelope right here. See that envelope? And in the center of that envelope, there's a little flap. Pull that out really quickly. I would just declare this over you that I feel the Lord will say to someone in here, you're home. It's not about a place. It's about a people. And I've called you to connect to my people. You're home. You can lay your, your head down. You can lay your worries down. You're home. You can rest know that you found a safe place that you can thrive in. You're home. That little flap right there, there's a part that says connect. See that, see that connect right there? And right under that, there are the words, attend a small group. I want to challenge you. Our next semester of small groups starts May 23rd. That's in four weeks. What I want to challenge you to put a check in that box and say, you know what, God, I'm going to step out of my comfort and I'm going to step into what you're doing. It's time for me to get connected. I don't want to just be going to church. I need to get connected. There's even other opportunities. Serve. It's a way to get connected. It's right next to the word connect. Those of you that are watching online, you don't have to be here to get connected. We've made it easy for you. Literally, all you have to do is in the comments section right where you are, the host that's working there right now is going to type in a connection card for you. All you have to do is click that. If you're watching on our website, you can just, or if you want to know our website, it's vvlifechurch.me. And there's a connect tab and there's a connection card right there. Just click on that. And you can just say, I want to get connected to a group. It's that, it's that simple. Just that simple. And all that God wants to do is plug you in where you belong. So I'm going to pray for you right now. As you're filling that out, you can go ahead and fill that out, that card. Make sure you put your information, your name, your email, phone number, so that we can actually connect with you. And, and just put, check, small group. Or I just want to serve. I just, I got to get, I got to get connected. I can't stay out here like this anymore. I can't stay like, you cannot stay like that out there anymore. It's time to come home. So, Father, I pray for this person right now that understands the feeling of being disconnected and understands that sense of isolation, God, but that you would, God, meet them right where they are. 
And by your spirit, you would move. You said it's not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. By your spirit, you would move swiftly, God. And God, you would speak with clarity. They know, God, they would have a sense of, I'm safe here. I can connect. And God, that they would know that same sense of belonging you gave me when you saved me. That they can have that same knowing that they belong. And it is your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen.